How is it going guys? So this is going to be the installation video for our new product, True Assets. Um, we're going to do a quick install of it and then quickly run you through the basics to getting you started for building your asset libraries. Um, and then we'll do an in-depth video on how to actually use all of the features and functions. So first thing we want to do is make sure that we install the add-on. So I'm going to go to install, find our uh, zipped true assets add-on and click install and then it will pop up here all we need to do is enable it and the very first thing that we need to do is make sure we have picked a directory for our asset library so we're going to go in here and I am going to create a true asset library I've already done that and we're going to click accept and then what will happen is in the file path section you'll see all of these four generated and we can just double check that that's happened just by reopening this and we'll see that all four of these are now appeared so these will be where your or what you can import as assets so objects materials worlds and node groups file um, and then inside of these there are like subcategories for the objects that we can bring in but we're going to run through all that in a different video so let's just save our user preferences and never trust the autosave and let's open up our asset browser so you'll notice that it opens up on current file there's nothing in there and if we go to objects true assets objects nothing in there true assets materials nothing in there true assets world nothing in there and again true assets no groups nothing in there so we want to start bringing some of this stuff in so how does it work so we can create worlds we can create materials we can create assets from the directory which is any directory that we pointed at or we can mark assets from this file First thing we're going to do is we're going to create worlds. What are the worlds? So if we head to a directory that has uh, any HDRIs in, so in this one, I think I've got something like 27 HDRI files that I downloaded from CC0 Textures, or actually it's called ambientcg.com now, uh, formerly CC0 Textures. All of these that we're going to be showing you how to uh, bring in. So you need an environment texture, uh, you don't need to it will do it with any but it's best to be done with an environment texture preferably an exr file because that's got full dynamic range um and we just basically point it to this directory you don't need to select anything we just point it in this directory and click create worlds and what that will do after a second or two once the blue ring is finished we can now go to our world tab we'll see all of these HDRIs that have been ported. But they're not just HDRIs, it's actually world shaders that have been created. So if we go to our properties and head to our world tab, we can see that I currently have the Nishita world set up. But if we drop this onto the screen, onto the 3D viewport, we'll see that a HDRI is now brought in. And it's set up with a full custom node, which we'll go into in a different video. So that's it for the worlds. Um, so what is create materials same concept what we can do and blender asset library current doesn't support this uh, it doesn't do it with the hdris either they have to be in a blend file uh, previously what we can do now is we can click the create materials button we can point it to a directory that has textures in it so in here we have this whole directory all of these are textures if we double tap into it, we can see that there's actually texture maps inside each one of these. Well, what we can do now is we can choose the type of material that we want to generate. So the Uber shader will deal with 99% of, of your, your library. Uh, plastic is for plastics and organic. This is set up for like organic materials like skin, flesh, uh, anything like that, which requires some subset of a scatter and a meaty, uh, meaty shading effects. So we can point this to this directory, which is like a hundred odd materials or something in. And then we can just click create materials. And we are now back. And as you can see, all of our materials are now imported. And let's move on to the last two functions. So we got create assets from a directory and then mark assets from this file. So how do these work? So mark assets from this file. Um, let's just say we wanted to create a table. Um, this is a terrible example of a table. So now what we'll do is we'll rename this fancy table and uh, we'll give it a material so from here now what we can do is we can mark assets from this file 
Uh, first of all, we need to save the file. So let's just save the file uh, somewhere. Fancy table thingy. Uh, save that. And now we'll come up with this little menu and it will ask us do we want to make our objects? We can bring objects in, bring materials in, bring node groups in, bring worlds in. We don't want node groups and worlds. Uh, we do want materials, we're setting the minimum nodes to zero. Uh, we don't want curves, we just want this mesh to come in. So we'll just click uh, OK. And now we'll see where has it gone. Should be a material in here. Uh, refresh. A, B, C, D, E, F. You see the current file. Uh, fancy table material. There we go. So we've got fancy table, fancy table material. And then in objects, we've got fancy table. And then in materials, fancy table material. There we go. And these will now be always available in your uh, asset library uh, for whatever blend file you open. And then the final one is we have, let's say, backlog of blend files and inside those blend files are awesome assets like you've got cars trains buildings uh, arc viz objects and things like that or materials anything that we've got in there excuse me we can now pull all of them automatically so let's go to our blend files folder and inside of these blend files are multiple objects obviously you can see the size of them um, these are just objects that i've built specifically for the showcase using objects from blender kit uh, awesome add-on by the way amazing free content on there and uh, they have some pretty amazing stuff on the paid content so this is not like a promo video for them or we're affiliate or anything uh, they just you know do a lot of awesome work so let's say we want to bring all of the objects from our buildings cars chairs and tables street stuff and then trains and trucks blends right and all i want from these don't care about the materials because all of the materials are specific to those objects so i don't want them you know as materials as an asset um, so i don't want the materials from them uh, i don't want the node groups and i don't want the worlds and i don't want any of the curves um, we are just going to set this to create new and we're going to leave it at a maximum time per file which is 600 seconds so it'll open the file and it'll work in that for 10 minutes and uh, if if it takes longer than 10 minutes, it'll automatically close it. And if it doesn't take longer than 10 minutes, it'll automatically close it. But it won't leave you hanging for too long. So if you have like 10 blend files, then the maximum that it would uh, spend in, 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 in that time would be, what's it, an hour and 40 minutes. Um, so let us bring all of the meshes in from these and see what happens. So we don't need to select them because we were in the specific directory, by the way, um, it will just do everything in this directory unless we specifically select what ones we want. So if we wanted just these two and then click that, it'll use them too, uh, but we want all of it. So let's do all of it, leave it for a minute and let it do its thing, and let's get back to it. And now, as we can see, that's finally done and it's brought in all of the assets that we asked it to from those files so for example on that we can just drop in this uh, sort of what is this some kind of shack some kind of building uh, very cool uh, again all of these files are on um, blender kit so you can view them all there uh, another feature just one last one is uh, if we say for example we created it again let's just create a uh, monkey uh, and we call her Susie uh, and let's just give her a material uh, let's call it Susie pink All right and now we save our file uh, as Susie pink what we can do now with a simple schema is control and w and that this will now mark um, all of the objects that are in this file and i want the materials too i don't want the nose group i don't want that and i want to render it in ev and let's just uh, override anything that's already there and if we click ok this will create this whole blend um, as whatever we've selected this blend as an asset 
and once it's done it will click render and that's that one guys um, so this is the quick installation and overview of true assets and just to show if we are now in a brand new file uh, we can go in here to our materials and see all of our materials awesome and we can go in here and see all of our objects amazing and there's that fancy table from earlier and uh, here's CCP on top so like I said this is a tool which will generate assets in these libraries for you from any of your existing blend files any texture um, paths that you've got set up so any, any sort of big libraries of textures that you've got set up and any HDRIs that you've got set up so it will automate all of those processes for you and create a robust asset library inside the true assets, objects, materials, worlds, or node groups setup. Again, this is just a little short overview. In the next video, we will go into more in depth on how the materials work, how all worlds work, uh, other things that you can do with the assets like setting up categories, etc. We'll go into that in the next video. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.